So the garden in February, uh, you know, this is not a uh, great time of year in the garden, but there is a lot going on uh, because February is really when we should be getting ready uh, for the spring. Uh, now, here we are in central Portugal, which has a climate that's pretty much like Ireland or, or Cornwall, really. It's uh, not really cold. It's just damp and grey and a bit miserable during this time of year. Uh, but of course, um, there's seed to sow. Um, I was thinking particularly of things that are essentially summer crops, things like tomatoes and peppers or half-hardy annuals uh, that really need the warmth. Now is the time to get them going, uh, not spring itself. Uh, it's also the time of year uh, when a lot of seed is coming up, uh, all those things that hopefully you might have sowed in the autumn, uh, hardy plants, uh, they will now all be beginning to sprout. So today we're going to be looking at uh, some of those seedlings that are beginning to come up. Uh, we're also going to be uh, looking at my propagator and we're going to have a brief excursion to the polytunnel uh, to see what's happening in the polytunnel with uh, germinating seedlings and uh, some uh, pelagonium uh, cuttings which I took last, uh, last year. Okay. Um spoken before about seeds that are difficult to, to, to get to come up, to, to get to germinate. Uh, and one of the strategies I mentioned that plants have is that in order to uh, save uh, themselves from being frozen over the winter, uh, they need to go through a warm, moist period and then a cold period and then a, a warm period again. A little bit later we'll look at some of those seeds which I've actually left out over the winter. Um, you can also do this uh, in the fridge if, they are, if you get hold of the seeds, perhaps after the winter, then you'll ne it's not very often necessary to put them in a little bag of, 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 of sand, moist sand for a few weeks and then uh, in a warm place and then in the, in, in the fridge. Um, another problem is seeds that are very hard. Now members of the pea and bean family, the Fabaceae, um, are uh, particularly notorious in this regard. So what we very often do is soak them in hot water. That's really hand hot water for 24 hours. So um, I meant, just mentioned about members of the pea family having these quite hard seeds that you soak in hot water, uh, let it cool, let them sit and soak for 24 hours. And then what you usually find is that most of them have definitely swelled up, uh, just like peas and beans do when you, when you soak them in water, um, and they're usually a little bit paler. And I've done that with some seeds of Circus chinensis, which is the Chinese uh, equivalent of the Judas tree, that small tree with wonderful pink flowers in, in spring. But I've noticed that two of the seeds are still a bit smaller and slightly different colour, uh, which means that we've got to try and scratch the coat a bit so that water can actually soak in. Uh, and this is a bit of a tricky one because we need to keep the seed in one place whilst at the same time scratching it. Um, so a bit of sandpaper and a, and a metal file like this, uh, just very gently scratching it so we abrade the surface. And then what we'll do now is we'll, we'll pop them in some more hot water and leave them for another 24 hours and then hopefully they'll swell up. And sometimes you have to go through several cycles of this before you've got the whole lot swelling up. But once they have swollen up, they should germinate pretty quickly. So you may wonder what I'm doing uh, crouching down on uh, not a particularly warm day uh, with lots of plastic bags. Well, uh, I've talked before about how a lot of seeds need to be outside chilled in the winter to make them come up. And especially if you've been collecting seed from something on holiday, you know, realistically, you're probably never going to be able to get those seed again. So you really need to do what you can to make sure they come up, which means sowing them as soon as you, as you can get them in, in the autumn and leaving them out. And we've had a bit of a, we've had four weeks of really quite cold weather here. What you often find after this is that as soon as it begins to warm up again, all sorts of things begin to germinate. It's, it's really rather magical. Uh, like, for example, um, Rosa rugosa here. Uh, roses tend to germinate actually quite easily, but they've got to have that warm spell in the autumn and they've got to have a good few weeks at quite low temperatures, just a few degrees above zero. 
um, possibly even some frosts, uh, and then they'll, and then as soon as it warms up, they'll begin to germinate. Now, uh, in an ideal world, uh, you'll have a, a cold frame for putting uh, seeds out over, over the winter. Uh, I do like to put seeds wrapped in a, in a plastic bag. It uh, helps stop weed seed landing, birds pecking at them, mice eating them, that kind of thing. Um, but we haven't got around to building a cold frame here yet, uh, so I put my bags of seeds in these stiff plastic bags which help keep the, stop the rain from gathering on the top. And it's a bit of a mucky job, sort of cold, wet, um, rather mucky uh, plastic bags. Uh, but you do need to check things every now and again, uh, especially as the weather begins to warm up. And, um, ooh, 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 what's happening here? This is the exciting bit. What's it going to be? Narcissus triandrus. That's a, a wild daffodil species. Tiny, tiny little seedlings. Um, and they probably won't get much bigger uh, before they die back in the summer because bulbs, bulbs are usually very slow. But anyway, we've got those wild daffodils coming up. That's... Um, so what I've got here is some capillary matting, which is, I think, really useful for seed trays because a lot of seedlings are very, very small, which means they're very vulnerable and a few hours of drying out and they can all be dead. Uh, for example, things like the herb thyme. Tiny seeds, tiny seedlings. Um, last year I, I lost most of them. So anyway, this year I've got my capillary matting. It sits in a tray and I have to keep the tray topped up with water, but it soaks up through the matting and um, goes. Uh, the water is soaked up through the little holes in the bottom of the pot where the, the, the compost is actually in touch with the capillary matting. So this year, no losses so far. Everything is um, very much, uh, very much better thanks to this this matting. One thing we really have to be careful of in cold, damp weather uh, is uh, fungal diseases uh, that can infect things like dead leaves, dead flowers. And then if it's, if it's cold enough and damp enough, particularly in a polytunnel or a greenhouse, it can then spread to the living parts of the plant. And pelagoniums, geraniums are particularly vulnerable. Uh, and in fact, the plant can disappear beneath a kind of fuzz, a horrible uh, botrytis mould fungi in, in a couple of days. So um, in weather like this, it's really good to go over particularly uh, cuttings, perhaps cuttings you took last summer, and uh, pull off all the all the dead leaves like this because it's the dead leaves that are the, the start of the of the infection um, and these ones I've actually got right by the right by the door so when I have the door open during the during the day um, they'll get um, get some get some ventilation okay so uh, this is my propagator and propagators are incredibly useful at this time of year uh, because they enable you to get a really early start for anything that needs uh, heat to germinate. Uh, and 20 degrees Celsius seems to be a key temperature uh, for a lot of things, uh, half-hardy annuals and certainly things like tomatoes and peppers and these uh, generally summer crops. Uh, so this is quite a big propagator, um, it doesn't use very much power, it's got a heating mat uh, uh, along the bottom which gives a lift of about sort of 10 degree, 10, 12 degrees Celsius above the ambient temperature. Um, they're wonderful things, you can just pack so much into them. Um, here we've got the first uh, tomato seedlings coming up. Um, they've only been up, I think, two, two days. And uh, all the other things that are sitting there uh, in their in their bags till they, till they germinate. Um, we've also got uh, a whole load of uh, pelagonium cuttings, which I took uh, back in the autumn, back in November. Um, a bit of a slow business doing them over the winter, but just a gentle bottom heat encourages them to root. And these these have now got uh, some new growth on them, so uh, they might. Um, they look like they're saying, look, look like they're, they're taking off.